Roki Sasaki is a phenom. In this video, we're gonna take a look at his NPB velocity and pitch shape data from the last two seasons, all in the spirit of determining how good of an MLB pitcher he could be. Sasaki throws three pitches, a fastball, splitter, and slider. I wanna focus on his fastball. In 2023, with the Chiba Lote Mariners, he averaged 99 miles per hour with 18 inches of vertical break and 17 inches of arm side movement. He had an above average release height at about six feet with a round average extension down the mound. Compare this to an average four seamer in MLB and it is a sight to behold. The obvious flaw in comparing Sasaki's fastball to an average MLB fastball is that the NPB ball is very different. It's slightly smaller, a bit tackier, and because of that, the total movement of pitches is accentuated in Japan compared to the United States. So that's why it's pretty valuable that prior to the 2023 NPB season and the data I just showed you, he pitched two games in the United States with Team Japan during the World Baseball Classic. It was in a stadium where we publicly could see his shape and velocity. This is important because this WBC data would be more representative of what shapes he'd actually create if he pitched in MLB. Of those 65 tracked fastballs he threw in the WBC, he averaged 100 miles per hour with 16.8 inches of vertical break and 12 inches arm side movement. No other fastball thrown over 100 times in the 2024 MLB season had greater than 10 inches of arm side movement at 97 miles per hour or higher with 16 plus vertical break. So although Sasaki lost some of that arm side run compared to MPB as we expected when he came stateside, it was still a very strong shape. There aren't a lot of starting pitcher comps for this four seam shape, but the closest thing I came up with is Hunter Green's fastball. Sasaki's was just a touch harder. Then we get to 2024 where the general consensus has been that Sasaki took a step back. We can prove this with his results, which still look really good, just not as good as 2023. And we can also prove it in his shape and velocity. Sasaki's average velocity went down to 97 miles per hour with 16 inches of vertical break and 14 inches of arm side movement. His release height was basically the same, but his extension rose a half foot, which is considerable. The swinging strike rate on his fastball went from 12% in 2023 down to 7% in 2024 with this shape change. The whiff rate almost got cut in half. I would presume he really struggled to miss bats in the zone. And yet the contact quality allowed wasn't terrible. So maybe that's somewhat of a positive sign. The big question is what Sasaki's shape would look like if he was using an MLB ball this season. So here's my projection using his NPB to World Baseball Classic change from 2023 as my template. I think he'd be around 14.5 inches of vertical break with eight to nine inches of arm side movement at the same 97 miles per hour. Let's compare this guesstimate of mine to the 2023 World Baseball Classic data that I showed earlier and we can see a pretty notable drop in shape. It's still really good, it's just not nearly as electric. The most interesting part of Sasaki's 2024 MPB data is that his extension increased. Generally what we see with extension increases is a lower release height. If you're further down a slope mound, naturally that release height should fall. But Sasaki's 2023 and 2024 release data is the same in the MPB, implying that his arm angle might have kicked up a bit in 2024 in order to maintain that release despite being further down the mound. Last point here is that generally what we see with a higher arm angle is more vertical break on your fastball, right? Makes sense, if you're tilted up a bit, you'll naturally get behind the ball more, convert arm side movement into a bit more vertical break. But that's not the case with Sasaki. He has just over an inch drop in his vertical break, implying that perhaps he's a little less efficient in how he's spinning the baseball, maybe cutting it slightly. This all gets to the final point, that something changed in how Sasaki was moving that affected his fastball's ball flight. Ben Brewster had a great tweet that highlighted how the ideal stride length, which is essentially tied to extension that we're talking about with Sasaki, is a byproduct of how long you can hold your hinge while still being able to rotate out of it. So maybe something changed with Sasaki's lower half. And perhaps that change occurred because of the arm issues he dealt with last year. 
Sasaki missed a few starts this past season because of what his manager said was the poor condition of his right arm, which kind of feels like fatigue or even dead arm to me, more than saying he has actual UCL damage, but I guess I don't know that for certain. The ultimate question here is whether to be concerned with the step back Sasaki's fastball took in 2024. And I think I lean towards saying no. He's a high velocity starting pitcher. Almost all of these guys get Tommy John at some point in their career. And none of that takes away from how insane of a talent he is from a velocity and age standpoint. If you're a team looking to sign Sasaki when he's eventually posted, if he's posted, you're building a projection model around how he's going to do over a six or seven year stretch or whatever you're offering him from a contract perspective. Within that stretch of years you have him, you're probably building in a major arm surgery during that time period. It's just the reality of the sport. Look at the top 10 hardest forcing fastballs from starting pitchers with over 100 innings in 2023. And look at how many innings they threw in 2024 and what they missed time with. Hunter Green was the healthiest of that group, and that's who I compared Sasaki's fastball shape to. So you can tell that I'm trying to be as positive as possible in terms of injuries. Now, I think the fastball's super important with Sasaki, but the pitch that's really the differentiator is his splitter. This thing is nasty. Between 2023 and 2024, consistent with the fastball, this pitch lost some velocity, but otherwise the shape didn't really change. And to be frank, it's a really wacky offering. I say that because he averaged under one inch of both vertical and horizontal movement on the pitch, which may not make much sense, right? How does a pitch not have movement? But we're looking at short form movement here, where our reference point off which movement is calculated is a pitch that spins like a bullet, often called pure gyro spin. You may have heard this term in relation to sliders, like bullet spun sliders or a gyro slider. They spin like this, but it applies to a smaller subset of splitters as well. The fundamental trait here is that they don't move arm side a lot. The average righty splitter in MLB moves about 11 inches to the pitcher's arm side. These bullet splits are usually around six inches or so. I found roughly nine splitters this past season in the majors that had below this six inch threshold. The most well known is probably Logan Gilbert's. Most of them just really aren't as hard as Sasaki's. And once again, none are even really close to being below two inches, both vertically and horizontally. Sasaki's splitter would be one of the most unique splitters in MLB the second he steps on a mound. The numbers obviously back up how good this pitch is from a performance standpoint, but it's also that this bullet shape relative to Sasaki's fastball shape is really odd. Look, for example, at the visual relationship on a pitch plot between the fastball and splitter of pitchers like Kodai Senga, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Logan Gilbert, Kevin Gossman. What do you notice? The fastball and splitter often have similar horizontal traits. They exist above one another. If you drew a vertical line from the fastball down through the pitcher's splitter, they line up or they're slightly off. Now look at Sasaki's relationship. Very weird, right? His split is nowhere near his fastball horizontally, which gets back to the point that for a hitter, I would imagine it feels like this pitch almost cuts more than you would expect a splitter to do. The last pitch we'll chat about quickly is his slider. The two things to note here are that this pitch has pretty big variance in its shape. It toggles between being hard with lift at times and being slightly slower with more drop at other times. It's mostly just a pitch he uses against right-handed hitters. And while the shape didn't dramatically change between 2023 and 2024, the velocity took a pretty large hit and the spin of the pitch went down. Not really great signs overall. I think this pitch will be somewhat necessary for him if he comes over stateside and struggles versus right-handed hitters. We've seen that with other fastball split pitchers like Kodai Senga and Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Both of those guys have reverse splits in MLB. They've been better versus left-handed hitters than right. And I expect that to be the case with Sasaki. So what would an MLB organization do with Sasaki from a player development standpoint if you were to come over stateside? Three things jump out to me. Number one is to give him some kind of sinker. This probably only applies if his forcing fastball struggles versus right-handed hitters in MLB. We didn't really see that over an NPV, so perhaps he survives. If you don't like that idea, maybe you could go Galaxy Brain off this number one here and give him some kind of splinker a la Paul Skeens or a Jose Soriano playing off the fact that he can throw so hard. I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to create a pretty good amount of drop on a pitch that moves more 
arm side. Number two is to give him some kind of curveball. In OO situations, there are so few swings in MLB on these curveballs that I think it's a interesting way to almost disguise his forcing fastball, get guys off it early in situations. The problem here is that he doesn't have a great ability to spin the baseball. His spin rates are low. He doesn't hold supination well at release. So I don't think this pitch would ever be great, but I could see it situationally working. And number three, the most obvious one, although I'm bearing it last here, is some kind of slider reincarnation. The velocity drop here that we saw was not good. A major league organization has to get this pitch back, especially if they want him to throw this about a quarter of the time to right-handed hitters. I think the idea here is to get him to just lay into the velocity on the pitch and push it above 90, create almost like a cuttery shape, throw it away from right-handed hitters. The reality is, again, that the spin rates aren't good enough, I think, to create a lot of lateral sweep, like a Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who spins the ball over 2,700 RPMs. Sasaki's gonna be probably around 2,200 or lower. That's a massive difference. Those are the more perspective player development items. I think the obvious one right off the bat is to figure out why his fastball shape changed and why the velocity was down. I don't think he needs to regain all that velocity and sit 99 plus, but I do think it's important from a shape perspective to get that pitch back to what we saw in the WBC or slightly worse. I'm not as encouraged if he's sitting like 14 inches of vertical break with this high slot where he's cutting the pitch and it's slightly more inefficient. So we'll see if that's fixed. But you also have a really weird posting situation here. There's a really good article on MLB trade rumors, which I will link to in the video description. It basically boils down to the Chibalote Mariners denying his request to be posted, partially from a financial side here. He's subject to the international market limitations, which would severely cap the amount of money he'd be able to make in this first contract he signs. The option for the Mariners is just to wait, I believe until 2026 for him to be posted, in which case he would not be subject to the international restrictions and probably make hundreds of millions of dollars more. So that's kind of what you have from a friction standpoint. I didn't really get into it in this video because I thought the shape stuff and what he is as a pitcher is more interesting personally to me. But I encourage you to check out that article if you want to learn more about this very odd situation occurring with Sasaki. I hope you enjoyed this video. I made a couple of these in the past with Kodai Senga and some other guys, but uh, Sasaki is a really unique talent in terms of how hard he throws. I'm fascinated to see what he would look like if he came over stateside. So I'm hoping that they allow him to be posted this offseason, but it remains to be seen. Thanks for watching.